Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever in the world you may be. Today I have an unboxing. This is the box that put me on the bench. So, yeah. But before I unbox that one, I have two, two orders that I made before I went on the bench from Marks and Spencers. Or Marks and Spencer, actually. It's funny, in the UK, people call it Marks and Spencers, or Marks and Sparks, or just Marks, or just Spencers. Anyway, if any expats are watching, you'll know what I mean. So, I buy quite a lot of my clothes, as you've seen previously from Tarje, which is where this knitted dress is from. I think they've really got their act together with clothes lately. I'll do that as a spectacular fail, opening the bag. Me and a pair of scissors, you might want to look away. Okay, so what have we got? Right, okay. So, we have... Do you know, it seems a bit ridiculous really. Sorry about the rustling. Looking at sandals when it's, you know, single digit temperature here I'm, I'm in centigrade not fahrenheit or goodness that'd be dreadful but this winter it is so cold in sydney do you know this time last year um i saw a photograph of myself and him indoors and we were running through the water in Gunnamatta bay you know short sleeves everything in the water up to the knees glorious sunny day warm as anything now look at it freezing anyway I digress. Oh, I'll probably always digress, won't I? Also, I'm indoors, is very busy today at work. So I'll be doing this, you know, this is the uncut version. This is the raw, as it happens version, no editing, no anything. So this is me. And you'll see all the mistakes that I make. Okay, so first up, there are some sandals. Now, at the moment, I've got oak boots on. And as much as I'll usually do anything for my subscribers, at the moment, I just cannot bring myself to take my cold, well, they will, will be cold feet if they come out of my oak boots, and put them into sandals. So. You know, I might actually, I might do another short video tomorrow where I try everything on. That would probably be better because there's a couple of bags to unbag, there's a box to unbox, and then afterwards I've got a lifestyle hack that's something a little bit different. Anyway, these are the sandals. They have a little bit of, little bit of bling on them, very minimal very padded quite nice so i will steal myself to try these on tomorrow because at the moment oh no you see if, if i told you how cold it was here and say you're living somewhere like the uk and i say to you it's 12 degrees here you know that's 12 degrees centigrade I don't know what it is Fahrenheit. You probably laugh and go, oh, for goodness sake, that's not a cold day. But you see, it's relative. I mean, the summer here is like between 30 and 40 degrees. So, you know, 12 degrees is, uh, it's cold. Now, I do believe, excuse rustling again, as usual, I have ordered these in both colours that were available. And you know, every time I do that, I say, I'll get both colours, I'll try them on, I'll see which one I like best, and I'll send the other pair back. I never do. I mean, honestly, I'm just... I'm a lost cause. Oh, and also, today is the last day of July. Now, 
If you ha I don't know if you keep up with my posts or it used to be called the community tab. But if you have a look on that, I've been sort of doing a little diary entry every day for the time I spend on the bench. I had a spectacular fail yesterday. Um, but I sold one of my bags, so I thought, well, sold a bag, you know, I can spend some of the money, which I did. However, this is now the 31st of July. From tomorrow, which is the 1st of August, until the end of August, I'm going to do my... Well, I was going to... No, I won't say that, because it's YouTube. I will do my best to not spend any money on bags, clothes, shoes, non-essential items. Anyway, I do witter. There we go. There's the black ones. And you know, really, I have so many sandals that... I really don't need any more, but, you know, when the weather starts to warm up, it's just nice to have a new pair of sandals every year. That's probably a bit wasteful, really, isn't it? I should rethink that, actually, and look at what I've got, and, yeah. I'll do that actually, I'll look at what I've got and compare them. Okay, so the next item is, um, oh, I don't know, it's all sort of screwed up in the bag. Like, do you know, Marks and Spencer, I know you're not listening to this, but if anybody who works at Marks and Spencer is listening to this, please don't just screw things up like this and pop them in the bag that you're sending through the mail. Because you know, they arrived all creased and you look at them and you think, oh God, that looks awful. And nine times out of ten, you'll send it back. So, you know, a bit better packing would be good. Okay, so this is a midi, a midi dress with sleeves. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so you'll have to keep that bit in. Um, I mean, I'm 70 in October. The tops of my arms, you know, the skin goes a bit crepey, and mm, you know, it's not so great anymore. So I love summer dresses that have short sleeves. Well, preferably down to there, not really, really short. Although, look, even makes my arms look even worse. But they are so difficult to find, but I have found one, this one. Oh, actually, I can zoom you out a bit. Like that. No, oh, should be off the microphone. There we are. It's got a... It's either a really high waist or it's supposed to be sort of empire line. I'm not sure. It's a sort of a tiered, you know, tiered standard midi dress, but it's quite nice. It's light. So I'll try that on tomorrow. Creases and all. Okay, so that's, that's that one. Okay, so that was that order. No. Excuse the noise. No, I meant to tell you while I was doing that, the costs of things. I will put them all in the description box down below. So if you want to order anything from Marks and Spencer, feel free. No, the flat sandals, these are leather with a bit of bling. Seventy-seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. That's seventy-eight Australian dollars, which is about oh goodness me, my brain's not working today. Uh, Thirty, about fifty-eight US dollars, roughly. And if you're in the UK, well, they'll be a lot cheaper. They'll probably be about £35 pounds there. So that was the shoes, sandals rather. Okay, the jersey midi tier dress in navy, and this was the, an Australian eight, 
this is in the petite length, was $55.99, so $56, so 38, 40 US dollars and I don't know, about 27, 28 British pounds, something like that. Excuse me, I must grab a, a sip of coffee because, oh, and I've also forgotten to zoom you in. That is one thing that I do regularly. I don't know why I keep forgetting it because, you know, we should learn from our mistakes. Okay. So, on to the next one. Oh, goodness, this is heavy. Oh. Okay, lots of noise again. Me with the scissors, I know it's... I inherited my clumsiness from my mother. I wouldn't think I'd train to be a dancer, would you? I could be light and graceful and everything else but outside the dance class clumsy as right oh okay got there so oh goodness wow that's um mm. oh i wasn't quite expecting that Okay, this is, um, you know, when you order things and you look at them on the website and you think, well, actually, that'd be quite nice. But you're looking at, you know, a tiny little picture like this, aren't you? And then you get it and it's full size and you think, oh, my goodness. Excuse me, what was I thinking of? Um... I don't know. I'll zoom you out. And I'll remember to zoom you back in again. Okay, so this is a pure cotton printed V-neck tiered midi dress. In petite length. And this one, for some reason, I got an Australian 10. Oh, I think because the reviews said that it ran a bit small. Yes, I remember now. However, this is... um. Yeah. Mm. What can I say? Quite a lot, usually. Um, I could hear my other half saying that. Um, okay. I'm, I'm really not sure about this one. It looks a bit more like like my tea towels. However, I won't pass judgment until it's on. I will try it on tomorrow. And I will show you what it looks like, even if it looks somewhat ridiculous. I mean, yeah, I'm past caring. When you get to the age of nearly 70, you just, I'm pretty much over everything. So, okay, that dress, whoa, that dress is $87.99, so $88, so, oh, I just mean my brain is not working today. 55 US dollars, about 44 pounds, British pounds, something like that. As I said before, I'll put all the links in the description box down under. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I, I usually say that when, when I don't particularly like something, but for the sake of being polite, you know, I just say, oh, wow, that's interesting. And this is, um, oh, you, you know, it's got a horrible polyester. Oh, it's got that polyester feel. Probably because it's made of polyester. Okay, where is it? Can I find it? Oh yes, okay. This is called an embellished round neck top. It's in the colour champagne. It's an Australian 8, which is the same as a UK 8, regular. And it has this camisole inside. And um, 
Oh dear. Okay, I'll try this on as well. But I'm, I so know this is going back. I, I really do try to order things that aren't going back. Do you know what I mean? I try and be selective because I'm aware of the carbon footprint of keep, you know, sending stuff halfway around the world and sending it back halfway around the world. And, you know, but sometimes things look good on paper or on your computer screen and in real life they look a bit like this and I just I can't I, I just I can't do this polyester thing it's just it, it's a shapeless sort of nothing with sort of little little crystally things I don't know if you can see those little crystally things on it anyway I'll, well, I will also try that on tomorrow. I don't hold out much hope for this one or the brown stripey number either. Okay, so this one. Embellished round neck top, colour champagne, Australian 8. Did I tell you the price of this already? I can't remember. I'll repeat it again just in case I didn't. Okay, an Australian dollar is 65.99, so it's more or less 66. So it's going to be about 44 US dollars and it's going to be about 32, 33 British pounds or probably a bit less because M&S is a bit cheaper in the UK. Right, okay, this is, um, oh dear, this is also, look I've done it again, for goodness sake, if I, what is it with me and the same thing, my sincere apologies, it's extremely rude of me to keep you at a distance like that, I'm not sure, what, what, what is this one, what is it? Oh, this is a cotton-rich, ribbed, collared, knitted top. Colour, soft white, size small. 49.99 Australian dollars. So that's about 35 US and about 25 British pounds. And... You know, sometimes whites look dirty. That sort of dirty white that you can get. I'm not a fan of those. So this... Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not sort of white, white, is it? It's sort of... Yeah, yeah. But I'll try it on. It's also quite thick and that would definitely be too warm for an Aussie summer. Absolutely too warm. Okay, so... Oh, there's two things left. Okay, so this is the same, but in navy. Which, look, the navy is fine, and I'm really liking these sort of polo necks. Which I know are quite trendy at the moment, but that's not really why, you know, I just always like these sort of necks, whether they're trendy or not. Sleeve lengths are quite good. But it is really thick, you know, really, really thick cotton. And that you cannot tell on a website, unfortunately. Oh, can you imagine the day when you can get that, you know, tactileness from something on your monitor? I don't know how on earth that would work, but if, if, I, could fit, if I could have felt this fabric on the website before I ordered it, I'd have gone, no, sorry, it's too thick. Somebody should invent that. I have no idea how that would work. If anybody else knows how that would work or comes up with a genius idea, do pay to it straight away and leave it in the comments down under. Okay, so that's the navy equivalent of the white one. And then this... Oh, this is that same navy dress that I ordered in... 
same size in an eight, but in the regular length. Because sometimes the petites are a bit too petite for me, which is, I don't know how. I mean, I, I am literally five foot nothing, so I am petite. However, I will zoom you out and I'll remember to zoom you back in again. Sorry, I'm, I'm saying this for my own benefit. I mean, I'm just, just because I'm absolutely hopeless. So, you see, if I order a regular length, is what, well, you might be able to see this actually, will you? But it's, it's sort of a maxi length on me. I think this one is promising. I won't promise anything, but I think this one looks good. Okay, so that, that concludes the two, yep, the two m &S orders. You see, I did it again, didn't I? This is what getting old does to you. You forget so many things. It's like funniest thing. Yesterday, him indoors was working late. Oh God, it was so funny. And I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll watch a film on Netflix because I just felt really blur, you know, I didn't feel like doing anything. So I looked through the films and I thought, well, that one looks interesting. And I'd been watching it for about 45 minutes and then him indoors came in and said, I'll finish work now. And he looked at the TV and said, oh, are you watching that again? And I was, I'd seen it before and forgotten. I promise you, I have not got dementia. I'm just getting old. And okay, so. Just to be safe, him indoors opened the box for me. Because opening a box with a pair of scissors, mm, I'm not too good at. Okay, so paperwork from my Teresa. Oops. Okay, I'm going to turn this upside down for a minute. Whoops. Okay, all right. Sorry about all the noise. Okay, so a yellow box from my Teresa. Might just zoom you out a little bit. Okay. So there we are. A box from my Teresa. It was when I bought this that I realised that. I had used up the remainder of my budget for July and also my budget for August. I set myself a certain amount of money I can spend in a month and when that's up, it's up, it's gone. Okay, really nicely presented inside. My Teresa always do a beautiful job of that. You know, if, if you order anything from my Teresa, and I will put their details in the description box down under because I, I really love ordering from them. Everything is always so well packed. There's nothing is going to be screwed up or, you know, just rattling around in a box with no padding, no padding, you know, tissue paper, air pockets, etc., etc. So, the dust bag's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? Anyway, this. I already have one of these, but it's um, my sort of winter version. And I was looking for a summer version of it. And luckily, I managed to get this. Oh, this really is well wrapped up, wow. Oh, the smell of leather is just intoxicating. It is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. It's a very tight fit. Whoops. Okay, so dust bag. 
All right. Okay. <sighs> right. Oh. So, any guesses? Do you know, I was watching Jackie of Jack's Bag Attack, who has a great channel. I'll put her details down under. Um, unboxing a bag and then measuring it. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. I should do that. And I thought, I'll take my tape measure down to the dressing room and then when I unbox this, I'll be able to measure it and you'll be able to see how big it is. Have I got my tape measure? No, I haven't. So, I will just pause for a moment and I will return with my tape measure. Hopefully I'll remember what I've gone up there for. Right, I'm back. Tape measure in hand. So, this is the bag, and she is very well wrapped up. Um, oh, okay, that bit goes around there, it goes through there, and that bit goes through there. Right, just fold this up. Okay, so this is what broke the bank. It's got the, the clochet the wrong way around. Colour this is. Um, it doesn't say, but it is the Laura Piana shoulder bag, and this is in the large size. So I think this is the. I think this is the L twenty nine. If I measure it across. actually measures 27. I'll zoom you out a bit more. Oops, wrong way. Actually, before I do that, I should show you a close-up of the bag. This is it. And it doesn't say what colour it is. I will however put the colour in the description box. Shoulder strap, which is always a good length on me. Well, I say always, the other Laura Piano bag I had was a good length on me. Okay, now the zips. Oops, there's a, okay. I need to do some cutting of the packing here. Oops. Trying to be extremely careful. Trying. Very trying, him indoors would say. And I can be very trying some days. I mean, you know, we've all got faults on me, so why not own up to them? Okay, so that's that. All right. Uh huh. That's that. And okay. I'll show you what I'm fiddling with at the moment. I am trying to undo this so that I can unzip it for you. In the mic. Um, I 
I remember there was a trick to this before. Ah, that's right. Simply just pull the thing up. Okay, so let me pull it back on. Put it on that one. It's a very unusual colour. It's sort of, oh, sorry, not much in, in the picture. You know, these zips are a bit stiffer than on the other one I have, whoops. But that is it. This is what I was hoping would be my summer version of the Laura Piana bag that I have already, which is, I'll just grab it and show it to you. Wrecking the place as I go. Right. Okay, so this is the black version, which I absolutely love. You see, and the zips are a lot easier on this one. Whoops, she said. That's it there, the black one. And I've taken this little thing out of the, this little charm thing out of the clochette and put it onto the zip. I just find it easier to have something substantial to hold on to to pull the zips open, just because of the arthritis situation. So that is her. You know, I'm not sure about the colour. It's a sort of a Mm. How do I describe it? It's like a sort of eau de nil. In like a very, very pale, soft green. With cool undertones. So let me zoom you in a bit more. However, I will tell you that it is. It does measure, okay, ten and a half inches along the base, which is 27, so maybe it's the old 27. Okay, all these names mixed up. The height is 16 centimetres, which is six and a quarter inches, and the depth is four inches or 10 centimetres. Strap up, I should do as well, shouldn't I? Okay, so down to the handle, it's 44 centimetres, which is 17 and a half inches, which for somebody short like me is perfect, to be honest, if you were quite a bit taller, it might be a little bit short as a shoulder bag. I mean, I don't, I don't think any stretch of the imagination would make this into a crossbody bag. It's just not that sort of bag. So my only real issue is the colour. I think it's because I've just never had anything in this colour before. Do you know what I mean? And it's sort of new to me. What do you think? It's an unusual colour, isn't it? They're beautiful bags. I mean, the leather is just sublime. It really is gorgeous. And this one, of course, now has sold out yet again on my Teresa. This is a, you know, this was released last season, this bag, and I assume just bought it in this one colour for the current season. The new Laura Piana bags on my Teresa, they're, they're all this weird sort of shape. I don't know how to describe them. 
there's sort of a north-south bag with a sort of a half moon handle and they're mostly suede in fact I think they're all suede and just a sort of a tote you know rectangle like that really nothing out of the ordinary and they are about let me think six and a half thousand Australian dollars and that's a lot of money this was quite a bit less than that thankfully um, the one thing I do like is that it's got silver hardware on it. The black one has gold hardware, which I like, and I prefer for the winter for some reason. I prefer silver hardware in the summer. But this one, I'm not sure. It's a lot of money, and I need to feel, you know, really... Oops, it's coming down again really confident you know that I'm going to use it a lot because for that sort of money you know cost per use it takes a while to get it down to a reasonable amount of money anyway this is what put me on the bench because it took up the rest of July's money and all of my August handbag budget which is why I'm not going to spend any money on bags in August. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you is a bit of a lifestyle hack. I don't know if you've seen the first video that I made. Sorry, I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm getting to zoom you in. Sorry. Um, but I included a little bit of footage down our hallway and I think that footage is also on, well, I'll put the first video up here, so or it might be up there. Um, the other video that I think contained footage of our hallway was, oh, when I showed you the dressing room. So I'll put that one up here or over there, um, because I show you the hallway there, and it's, there are a lot of there are a lot of framed pictures, prints, mirrors. There's a combination of, you know, very contemporary IKEA mirrors, which I've got opposite each other. So you get that, that sort of never ending effect. You know, I absolutely love that. I love playing with mirrors and reflections. And there's also a beautiful um, vintage mirror that him indoors bought me from an auction, which is really, really gorgeous. Anyway, you. If you see that, you'll see that I'm the sort of person that likes things on walls. I like pictures, prints, framed fabric, anything that's beautiful. I just really love walls that just say something about the person living in the house. You know, I find bare walls a bit, I don't know, a bit bland. You know what I mean? And the thing with, with pictures is that they don't always have to cost you a lot of money. As you will see in the lifestyle hack, I'm just about to show you. So I'll just pause you for a moment and I'll be right back. What I wanted to show you today was this picture here. And this really lovely gold frame. It's quite an interesting picture. Now this frame was from Ikea and it was about, I think it was about $29. So, you know, as far as Ikea frames go, fairly expensive, but it is beautiful. In fact, I should have showed you closer detail really, because the finish of it really is beautiful. You can see it in the light there. It's got a lovely sort of a lovely sheen to it. It's really gorgeous. Now, IKEA also sell prints that you could quite easily put in this frame. 
But then you could walk into somebody else's house and see the same thing on the wall, which, look, I mean, some people don't mind. I, I personally don't like to, to see the same things that I have in my house on the wall elsewhere. Okay, so we're just pulling up the little metal, metal tabs. And these little black tabs here. And down the side, you can see them there, that hold the print in and the backing plate. Best way to do this is with a standard screwdriver. Just put it underneath the tab and bend it up. Really simple. It's just a little bit of a DIY project and oops, I just need to go up a bit more. And that one. Yeah. Okay, so that's the backing plate off. And just try to take this off without. messing up the glass. Okay, so with the frames from Ikea, you get a border like this, so you can put anything inside it. And in this case, I put a paper bag. When we went to visit my youngest son and his wife and my granddaughter in South Korea a few years ago, we went to an amazing museum that was just, it was just what one man had collected over his lifetime and it was incredible. And I mean, these are some of the things that the collection was so diverse, it was just incredible. I, it absolutely blew my mind, I mean, really. Anyway, I thought that would look so good framed. And that's all it is, paper bag. So, you really can frame anything. I mean, it's just limited by our imagination, really, isn't it? You can frame a paper bag, you could cut. You know, some places do really nice paper carrier bags, you know, with a nice pattern on them. You could do that. You could do a collage with postcards. I I like framing postcards. I usually go for little frames and then group them together and they look really nice like that. At this point, before I bend the tabs over, I'll just make sure that I've got it in the right way. Yep, I have. And just bend the tabs back over. So, I mean, all that's cost you is the frame, which has the insert in there. There is a name for that insert, you know, that goes around a picture or a photograph. Oh, can I think of that name? At this particular moment in time, no, I can't. Oh, what is it called? Oh, it's so annoying. If anybody out there is approaching my age, you will know what I mean. Words just pop into your head and then they're just pop straight out again. I mean, where do they go? Somewhere on this earth is a pile of words that have popped out of menopausal women's heads or slightly mature women's heads. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure those are pushed down really well. So I don't want that flying out with glass in. Okay, et voila. Haven't put it in upside down, have I? No, thank goodness for that. You can see the lovely sheen on, on the frame. And on the back, I just thought I could hang it on a nail in the wall. I just use one of those, you know, those twist, twisty things that they put around loaves of bread and stuff. I use those. 
and then you can make it into a loop, hang it on a nail. Away you go. So, I thought that would be interesting. Oh, I've just noticed I've knocked a whole load of dust down inside there. However, I will sort that out after this without subjecting you to that. So, that is it for today. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, I'll do a quick try on video of the items that I bought from Marks and Spencer. Um, what else have we got coming up? Friday, there's the shopping vlog from the footage that we shot when we went to Bondi Junction Shopping Centre on. When did we go? Monday. Monday. You see? See what I mean? Now, this weekend on Sunday, the live is going to be about do you want to live in France? And looking into the pros and cons. Because I know, particularly in the UK, so many people dream of living in the south of France. You know, with chateaus and, you know, beautiful beaches and fields of lavender. And, and it is beautiful. There is a really beautiful side to the south of France. Beautiful side to any part of France. But there are some other things too that I, I think are interesting and I think it will make for an interesting discussion. So if you're at all interested about what it was like to live in France or to ask me any questions if you would like to live in France yourself, then that video goes live, well we go live at 11.50pm, that's the countdown, the actual video starts at midnight and that's Australian Eastern Summertime. I think I've got that right, A-E-S-T. I always find it confusing. Um, have a look on the world clock, see what time it is for where you live, and I'd love to see you there on Sunday. However, hopefully, I will see you here again tomorrow. So, where has my remote control? Th ah, here. So, as always, I will thank you so much for watching. A bientôt, mes amis. Au revoir et bonsoir.